What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanic, and today we're looking at another really stupid idea, and that is trying to make an explosive engine, which is actually funny, because I was thinking about this, and I was talking with Cosmo about it, and this is actually like the most realistic engine you could possibly make in Scrap Mechanic, because real engines, well, they actually, you know, they, they kind of explode inside them. You burn in gasoline, the gasoline explodes, causes expansion of the piston, etc, etc. So, this idea came to me kind of a combination of ways, kind of from the comments, kind of also because YouTube recommended me Reed Captain's video. So, I mentioned Reed Captain before uh, when we did a maze following robot. If you guys don't know who he is, I will include a link in the description. And I don't want to spoil his video at all, so I'm not really going to talk about what he did. Um, the only thing I'm going to say is that he didn't use any mods. He did it completely in vanilla, whereas I am using the Challenge Parts spawning mod to use the explosive spawners, which spawn explosive canisters. So we've got a few different designs here. I'm going to go through all the different designs because each one, I kind of learned something new about it as we went along. And there's some really cool sort of tricks that I learned. And then when we get to the end, I have a design that works as an engine. And uh, we're going to try and put it onto a car of sorts with some wheels and see if that actually works. I have no idea if it's going to work. I haven't tested it yet. Um, I know it'll spin and that's about it. So... First off, we got uh, an explosive engine set up here. We're using, of course, Metal 3. Metal 3 is sort of the thing. And you can see it's it's really quite simple. We've got this sort of crankshaft in the middle, um, and we're just using pistons for no collision so we can keep the crankshaft connected. So these are all level 5 pistons. It's all Metal 3, and the reason why is explosives don't seem to break level 5 pistons or Metal 3 stuff or any of the bearings. So this whole mechanism stays together, and as you can see, we can rotate it. Um, there's no counterweight on this. You'll notice both pistons are attached to the same side of the cylinder, and there's no counterweight. Now, this is kind of a weird thing, because normally you'd want the pistons offset, so they fire at different times. But the explosive spawners already have, like, a half-second delay between explosives. So this, this kind of configuration actually works out well. I tried them originally offset... And it didn't matter because you're really waiting on the explosives to spawn. And getting the timing of the explosive spawners down is really the whole difficult part of this build. So this one's just a basic example. Uh, we can spawn explosives. And you can see, you might, you might be able to tell what just happened there. But look, this one, for some reason, it spawns and it gets jammed in this space, but it doesn't detonate, right? So we can detonate that one manually and it moves the piston. But this one on the right, you'll notice it spawns and it blows up instantly. Um... For some reason, I don't know why the position of this spawner, just relative to the blocks, it, it just causes this to happen. I tried replacing this spawner on this side, and it still doesn't work. It still doesn't blow up automatically. So, what I ended up doing is just taking the one that instantly explodes. Look at that. It's literally compressing the explosive block into these blocks, which is causing causing this explosion. So, and if we, if we time it just right, uh, we can get these pistons to... See that? Look at that. You can kind of get rotational motion. You can see how this would work, right? So it's pretty decent. So of course, I, I duplicated this side. I just cut this side off, duplicate it, put it on that side. And then we end up with this mechanism here. Um, but this was on a sensor system. So same thing. Both of these will blow up as soon as you spawn them. And I've, as you can see, kind of blocked out the pistons more. So they, they don't really, you know, they don't stay angled. They sort of go nicely. And you can see, you know, if we hit it, it spins relatively nicely. And we've got... Just two sensors here. Again, level 5 doesn't detonate with a white strip. And these are color sensors. They're going to sense that white strip. And so if we turn this on, uh, this was my first attempt to try and get some timing. But the problem you can see is it, it'll fire, and then it'll, it's, it's hard to get close because the stupid explosives keep hitting you back. You know what? We can put a chair down. Let's get a toilet seat. Actually, bathtubs are invincible. Let's just... There we go. All right. So you can see if we're close here... Look, it kind of like fires, and it's waiting for the sensor to get around, and this is normally how I would make a piston engine, but the problem is the explosives don't spawn fast enough to, to do this, so you can't get that smooth rotation going. You can see it's like it fires, and then it fires too late on the other one, so it counters it because the spawner is just too slow. So obviously this isn't, this wasn't going to work. Then, of course, I thought, well, if you can't, if you can't do it with one, then you need multiple spawners. So this looks like a four-cylinder engine now. We've got the entire mechanism doubled up twice, but it's actually not a four-cylinder engine. I mean, it kind of is, but these two pistons, you can see, um, they're connected. They're attached with this block right here in the middle, and on the other side, the same thing. These two are also connected. So it really acts as like a two-cylinder engine, but we have two sets of spawners, and what that lets us do is spawn stuff twice as fast, obviously. Um, and so then we've got it hooked up into a basic timer loop, and this kind of gets us 
gets us rotating. Again, I'm gonna put down a bathtub. Look at that. Rotating engine. So same thing as before. We're just using a timer loop. We don't have sensors on this one. We're not checking positions of anything. It's literally just timing it with each explosive. I tried this with four sensors. And you would think, all oh, four sensors would be great because you can speed up as the shaft speeds up and it'll sense the position of the shaft and fire. But the reality is, even with four sensors, once the shaft got spinning fast enough, the timing started going off and it would actually fire at the wrong time and send the shaft backwards. So I did it with just a fixed timing mechanism, which means the engine only will ever spin at a fixed speed. But as you can see, it actually, it's working quite well. Um, and we can actually, hold on, if we change the graphics to potato quality, it's actually a lot easier to see all this. So we just turn literally everything off. And uh, I don't know which setting it is specifically, but there's one setting that if you just turn everything off and apply, and just, there we go. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit a little bit easier what's going on. So you can see the rotation, it's clean, and you can see the explosive spawning. I'm, I'm a big fan of this. This is such a stupid project, but I'm a really big fan. All right, this potato, this is, this is hurting. Oh my God, this is, this is scrap mechanic with no shadows. It feels like I'm not touching the ground anymore. Anyway, we're gonna just look at the rest of them like this and then I'll turn it back up. So after that, of course, I uh, I clued in. You can see I've put counterweights on the on the shaft now. There is a counterweight, it makes the shaft almost neutral. Um, almost, not perfect. Uh, and then this one is kind of different from that one. So that one, you may or may not have noticed, it's kind of hard to tell, uh, but it actually wasn't firing at a perfect Perfect timing. See that one explosive that gets pushed out? It doesn't detonate right away. It's actually getting, like, the flame trigger, and then it's doing a delayed detonation. It's it's really hard to tell. Um, so there's one reason, and it, I know this reason is going to make total sense to people, but the reason is the, the cylinder is covered. You see, this, if this covers, um, this cylinder, yeah, oh, how did I do that? That was cool. This cylinder here, this is covered. You see, it's all, it's all one solid block of metal three. Uh, and of course, that's the problem. Everybody knows you can't cover your cylinders. You have to let them ventilate, uh, just like in a real car. So that's the only difference between that one and this one. In this one, I opened the cylinder tops up, and for some reason, it causes the explosions to happen instantly now. See? So now, you can hear the difference. This one, you know, this one sounds like it's firing all the time, right? And this one sounds like it's got a, a sort of like a skip, which doesn't give it... See? You can hear the skip, where it like misses, it like misses a fire. You know, this is like, this is like when you have an engine with a bad spark plug, right? It's just missing that one cylinder. But this one, see, you've replaced the plugs now, and it's good to go. And actually, these are all just half a second timing, well, 2.25, because the logic block adds another tick. Um, but basically, I'm just sending a pulse, as you can see, moving down the timers, and the pulse is just triggering every half a second so that way each explosive goes off every, well every quarter second actually so each explosive goes off every half a second right four explosives uh two so it's half a second per side it works out it's a quarter second so we got a nice smooth rotation here uh this is this is really clean so finally i decided okay well we're in a good spot here so uh let's put some weight on it and see what happens and i put weight on it i put this this weighted tire on it connected just straight with an axle to it and I realized the explosive engine couldn't ever start. So when it had weight on it, the explosive wasn't powerful enough to push the weight initially. So of course I made a clutch. Um, and it's not really much of a clutch, but that's what this sort of gear setup thing here is. So this is a uh, kind of like a metal three square gear. And then we've just got this one little like piece that sticks off here on a suspension. And this of course is on a level five piston. So when we engage the clutch, that pushes this piston forward, which compresses the suspension, and eventually this catches on this and starts spinning the wheels. So what we gotta do is start the engine up in neutral, and you can see once it's going, so we've got it spinning, but the wheels at the back there, they're not spinning. Maybe occasionally the clutch touches them, but when we press 2, it pushes that clutch in, and eventually it'll... Oh, we broke it. Oh, yeah, no, this happens sometimes. Sometimes you just apply the load too quickly, and the cylinders just... They just pop, pop right out. Yeah, no, so that still, see, it's not, it's not perfect. Okay, there we go. See, perfect. We weld it back up. All right, try that again. So here we go. Get the engine spinning. Let it get into a smooth rotation. Yeah, and then clutch. There we go. There we go. See, look, now it engaged perfectly. So now we're still spinning our wheels. We've got load on the engine, uh, and the engine can keep firing through the cycle. 
This is just this is just cutting edge technology. You know what? The wheels look really good in low graphics. Maybe that's just me, but I think the wheels look great on super low graphics setting. All right, I'm gonna turn this monster off. So anyway, we got to this point. This is a really still just a two cylinder engine. Um, you know, but it but it works. We're at the point where we can apply load. So then finally I said, okay, well, these are all welded to the ground. As you'll notice, all these explosive engines are welded to the ground. So I thought, I've got to do a test where it's not welded to the ground. Because obviously explosives, they have kickback. Uh, maybe it'll kick the engine around. So I, I got to this point here. And this one's the same setup as that, but not welded to the ground. We've got a little stand here. And you can see we can just put it on a lift and plop it down. And there was one fundamental problem with this. If you notice, none of the explosives detonate. So, well, they, they do, but once they once they completely jam. So this was an interesting thing. The one thing I realized is that in the game, when something's welded to the ground, it literally cannot move. There is nothing that can move it. And so as a result, the explosives are getting jammed into an immovable object, so they have no choice, I guess, but to explode. But in this case, because the object can move, the explosives are actually just, see, they're kind of, you can, I don't know if you can tell before it blew up, but they're causing the whole creation to, like, kind of shift and bounce and as a result, the explosives don't instantly detonate. So this was uh, just a big flop. We had an issue. Basically, this engine will never fire, right? It'll just it'll just fill up with explosives. And then they're only exploding because it's spawning a new explosive inside the old one. And of course, that you know this doesn't this doesn't get you a good cycle at all. So this is just just big. Okay, yeah, no, just okay, are we done? All right, a big sack of garbage. So anyway, of course, the solution is spud guns. Now, spud guns, um, yeah, so this is this is the final engine, V5. Uh, sensors, level 5, invincible to explosives, no problem. Spud guns are not. Uh, spud guns, mounted spud guns have a durability of 4. It means they very much will die to an explosive. So, we've got these extremely long pillars with 3 spud guns on each. And that is, of course, to get them, like, really far out of the way. And they shoot through these big openings in the top. Now, the reason we use three spud guns is three spud guns will instantly detonate an explosive. So it's a very simple setup. The spud guns are hooked directly into each sensor. And as soon as the sensor sees an explosive there, uh, all three spud guns fire. Instant explosion. It's all pretty fast. So if we do it, we've got the same kind of timing setup, same clutch mechanism. But this engine is, of course, free-floating. So let's turn it on. And there we go. You can see we get nice smooth rotation, nice clean, and you can actually look, if you look up, you can see the spud guns kind of firing one after each other. So it's perfect. This is great. And then, of course, we've got the same clutch mechanism. We engage the clutch, and there we go. We should have rotational motion. Amazing. All right, so what I want to do now, now that we've gone through basically the entire design process to get here, which took quite a while, to be perfectly honest, getting the dimensions of things and getting, you know, a proper smooth rotation. It's why I like doing these things off camera, because it's it's one of those things where, you know, you just got to sit down and figure it out and kind of play with it until you get what you want. Um, but what I want to do now is take this engine, which is just a monster. Um, I'm going to save it, actually, because I don't think I have. But I want to take this engine and I want to make a car for it. So we're going to run this to like a shaft and then we're going to have it go out to an axle and put wheels on it. And then we're going to try and put um, wheels on the front here and change this to a driver's seat. And it's going to be a very big car. We're on a flat world, so I'm not going to try and make this like anything small for terrain. But I just want to see if we can actually generate enough power through this to push itself. Because this is a very heavy thing. Like, this is, you know, there's, like, metal here. There's lots of, like, concrete three to balance out the shop. It's a relatively heavy thing. And we are using only four explosives. So, they are large explosives, mind you. But I'm curious if this is actually going to generate enough force um, to push this around. So, let's change the graphics back. And, and then we're going to try this. All right. So, first thing we're going to do is uh, just delete this shaft here. Um, I think that's going to be metal three. We need to use the small pipe pieces to make a 90 degree gear. So I think this is going to be enough metal three to get it out of the explosion. The small pipes will explode. Actually, let's go that far. Um, but yeah, the small pipes are going to explode. So that's not a good thing. I'm just going to delete all these stands. We're going to replace the passenger seat with a driver's seat, level five. Uh, keep all the timing up here, no problem, but this is going to be a, a driver's seat, and we're going to put um, some really small, just sort of terrible steering wheels on the front. Alright, and then we just need to make the uh, the cross axle nonsense. So, this comes back, again, this is still our main support beam. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, we're gonna put the- this- this will work. This will work. We'll put the wheels on the outside. Um, we can just do something like that. Yeah, this is- this is all just really terrible, guys. This is really well thought through, as you can see. Um, and then we need to do some pipe piece stuff. So we need this pipe, we need this pipe, and we make some gears. Alright, and for wheels, I think we're gonna use the hay bales, because they're weight 2 and they're relatively large. Um, the other thing that's weight 2 as well is the radar dishes. But I think the friction of the hay bales is gonna be better. 5 friction versus 4. I don't know. You know, we're gonna start with the hay bales. Worst case, if it's if it's not gonna work, then we'll just um, swap it to something else. So we're gonna put a hay bale down like this. I think that'll give us ground clearance enough, right? Like, just barely. And then another hay bale here. We can also lift up the front end, actually, too. We can put the steering wheels really low, because it, it won't matter how low they are. Uh, and then we gotta do this. So put a shaft straight across, because this is gonna be our drive shaft, basically. And then we weld the shaft straight across. Alright, so you can see they're kind of glitched into each other, but as soon as we, you know, as soon as we take it off the lift, um, you know, they straighten out. Right, so that should, that should be good. And then we just need wheels on the front here, uh, to steer. This is... <laughs> His vehicle looks really bad, okay? It really, it looks, it looks bad. I, I'm well aware of how bad it looks, but we're proving a point, okay? We're proving the point that this could potentially be a viable transport option. So, here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna start the engine up, hopefully not destroy the drive shaft in the process. Um... And then it's either going to move forward once we engage the clutch, or it's not. I mean, that's, that's basically where we're at. So here we go, let's start the engine up. Okay, it's looking, it's looking good so far. Is it rotating the shaft in the wrong direction? What? Hold on a minute. Which way is that rotating? It's rotating that way. Oh, I totally, it's totally rotating it in the opposite direction now. All right, grab you, thank you, and just reattach this. Perfect, engine rotating, and engage the clutch. In, oh boy. It just, okay, hold on, hold on, let it, let it get rotating again. And, okay, and engage the clutch. Engage, engage the, engage the clutch, okay. As soon as, look, as soon as you engage the clutch, the engine just, look at that, it just stalls, it just stalls right out. You disengage the clutch, it goes back to rotating. You engage the clutch, it just, just can't, can't push those wheels. Oh, now we're rotating backwards. Man, that is, that is, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on a minute. It's clearly not going to work with the hay bale wheels. Let's go with the smaller wheels. These are these are obviously huge. Let's go to the radar dish wheels. I probably shouldn't have probably shouldn't have broken both of those off. That would have been that would have been smart. All right, super light wheels. Um, lower friction, but maybe maybe they're lighter, so that'll help. I don't know. Here we go. Let's get the engine going. Engage the clutch. And it just it just man it just stalls right out. And then as soon as you- yeah, now see, once it gets stalled out and it starts spinning in the wrong direction. Hmm. Alright, so I have one- one final solution, which I'm not super happy with. Also, I'm gonna change this back to potato quality because, uh, on potato quality you can actually kind of see it stalling out. So let's just- let's just go all the way back to potato quality here. We're gonna put a single thruster on this creation. And we're gonna pull it and give it a little bit of initial speed. And then I'm hoping- that we can let off the thruster and let it continue to move on only its own engine power. Like, I'm thinking that once we get, you know, the initial speed, so we'll hook this in a W and I'm putting it right up front so it's very easy to see. Right, so this can- oh god, that's not even enough. No wonder this thing can't move. This is super heavy. Holy cow. Alright, here we go. Two thrusters. Right, so we can get it- we can get it moving. We can actually- look at that, we can engage the clutch even. Alright. And then if I let off the thrusters, it lets off, okay? But let's- let's keep the clutch engaged. 
What happens if... Okay, so there we go. Clutch is engaged. Let's get it moving. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, hold on. This is... This is... What is going on here? Oh, there's, like, explosives. All right, hold on. Let's just... Let's just let the engine move on its... Oh, it's jammed. Oh, the engine cylinder's exploded. Oh, okay, perfect. No, per I don't think this is gonna work. I don't think the explosive engine has enough power. But anyway, here we go. Let's uh, let's turn it on. All right. That looks good. All right, let's give it some thrust. What? What the heck? I think when you try moving with the explosive spawners, I think the explosive spawners, like they output, they put the bomb in the wrong spot. Because see here, their bombs are always in the same spot. But I think as soon as we move a little bit, the bombs aren't going in the same spot. So the engine stops rotating. Yeah, see, they, they I'm not even I'm not even engaging the clutch or anything. The engine just stalls out because of... Oh my, this is never going to work. Well, okay, hold on. Hold on. There's got to be... There's got to be a way to do this. All right. Just give it, just give it a little bit of gas. Just, just, no, yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't work as soon as you move. Well, I don't think this is going to work, uh, at least not in its current state, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I, I definitely love this engine. I'm going to upload this engine to the workshop on its own, uh, right here. Did you honestly, wow. Wow, I drove by this and blew the switches off. Oh, this one was the one that was freestanding and never worked anyway because all the bombs spawned. Yeah, okay, never mind. That's That one's not a big deal. So I will upload this one to the workshop if you guys want to check it out. It doesn't seem to work in creations, though. So this works. It's a stationary engine, um, and it lets us engage the clutch. But it doesn't work as soon as I put load on it. And then, of course, the spawning doesn't work when the creation is moving. So I wouldn't mind coming back to this concept at some point in time. Maybe I need to make, like, bigger cylinders that'll fit the bomb better even when you are moving because these obviously are just snug enough to fit the bomb and i think as soon as you move it doesn't place the bomb in the right spot but definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments down below i still think it's a really really cool project and of course shout outs again to reed captain who uh you know once again made a project and then i i just felt like i had to do it it just it looked so exciting uh, i really wanted to try it myself but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and uh Maybe I need to upgrade it. Maybe I need to make this like 16 cylinders and just a lot of explosives. So like four or five explosives all detonating at the same time. And definitely make a bigger version of it. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time.